Mike, fire up the git fiddle and pluck me out of tune while I wrangle this here show. Yee-haw, y'all! It's time for the Mythwits, the show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity, and coated with sarcasm. Every week, we bring on an industry guest to talk about the ever-expanding Geekoverse and to play a game with us. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me this week is Mike Kafis. How you doing, you old scrote? <laughs> and our guest this week is Starla Hutchton. Hey, guys. Hey, Starla. <laughs> And I got her name right this time. Starla yes. is a geek of all trades, master of none, author in multiple genres, book cover designer, and occasionally spews words into the microphone as an audio book narrator. Uh, she also does uh, book cover design as well. So Starla, welcome back, returning guest. Yay, it's, it's exciting to be back here. I had so much fun last time, so I'm good, glad to get good. to do it again. Well, <laughs> I hope you have fun this time because we had so much fun reading your book. Yeah. <laughs> Which is um, make bright the arrows. Make bright the arrows. Yeah. Book one. And what's series that? of many more that better be coming out. You better be already working on. <laughs> I am. I'm already working on the second one. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It was. That was pretty good. It was a pretty fun romp. But before we get into that, I, you know, you <laughs> you gave me your show notes, and I was like, I was like, well, that is super interesting. Of course, we're going to talk about that. Um, <laughs> you said that. As part of your research, you got into bull riding and, and rodeo somewhat, and you're sort of like an accidental fan. So tell, tell, us, tell us this journey. <laughs> how does one become a rodeo fan by accident? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So um, the, the main character in Make Bright the Arrows, Lena, is um, the entire story is told from her POV, and she's a fan of the rodeo. And I don't know where I got that idea in the first place, but I'm like, I don't really know anything about this. So in order to be able to talk about it, you know, within the book um, in a somewhat coherent manner, I had to do research. <laughs> and um, it started with like watching YouTube videos and stuff. Just like I wasn't really understanding like what was going on. And then I discovered a documentary series on Netflix called Fearless. <laughs> and it is about Writers in the Professional Bull Riding Association. Um, <laughs> and that, actually, I've heard of that documentary. Yeah, yeah, it's really, really good. And I'm I'm not a huge sports person. Um, oh. But what this thing did is that it took the uh, bull riding. It took it from being a sport to being a story. <laughs> and that's the point that I was all in. So um, I got to know some of the writers in the documentary um, and, and learned, you know, about the actual sport and what they do and the physical demands. And it just kind of didn't stop after that. Uh, we went to New Mexico. Uh, my husband's uncle has a ranch and he's been involved in a rodeo and everything. And so we, when we got there on that Friday, he was watching PBR and I was so excited um, because I got to sit there and ask him all these questions. And this is like a very grizzled, like Vietnam war vet who I have never had anything in common with. Um, so, <laughs> so this was like the first time that we were connecting on any level and that was just amazing to me. Uh, but yeah, yeah, after that, it just kind of, it got way out of control. <laughs> you know, I want to come back to that. We're going to have a, we're going to, we're going to talk about the, when we talk about the book, we're going to hit a one subject that I think this is going to tie into Mike. So when we, we get to the discussion that we we're talking about in pre-show, hit me up. Right, uh, because I want to. I'm, I'm putting a pen right here in this because I, I want to bring this up. It's really good. So it brings it all around. So you know, my family's from West Virginia, right? Now there's not a whole lot of rodeo in West Virginia, but it is. You know, it is. Uh, it is. It's, it's country folk, right? Just a, they, a whole, not a whole lot of teeth, not a whole lot of rodeo in West oh, Virginia. Oh, come on, man. That's <laughs> West by God, Virginia, my man. But uh, <laughs> almost heaven. But anyway, they. Uh, you know, my family's. It, they did watch some rodeo. I mean, I never really got into it, but it, you know, I could see, I could see the draw. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's very like interesting. NASCAR it's, before there were cars, if you think about it. Dude, NASCAR is boring compared to rodeo. Cars, oh, yeah. 
you know? And it moves so fast, like you, I mean, it's only an eight second ride for bull riding, yeah. you know, or for, for a bareback riding, you know, the, the Broncos and everything like that. Um, eight seconds is the mark. So it holds your attention and moves you on to the next thing right away. So for, for people with the, <laughs> you know, that don't quite have the attention span, you know, sit there and watch them go around a track 500 times. Um, rodeo is actually really great. <laughs> nice. You know, Mike, you're going to have a really hard time with this game. The, the game sounds like it's yeah, getting harder and harder for you. Yeah, I know. And easier and easier for, mm, I don't know, Starla? <laughs> <laughs> well, fine. We got a game we're going to play later, and it has to do with oh, the rodeo. Man. Quick tease. What is that called? It's called Rodeo or Nodeo. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. Oh, I'm, so, I'm so glad that I mentioned that in the, in the show notes that I gave you. I, so. <laughs> I am, too. I saw that, and I was like, oh, I got our topic. Because we like to have like a, like a general topic that ties into mm -hmm. whatever it, it is that, that uh, our artist is doing. It, it just, it's just more fun that way. Because um, you come into the whatever it is you're doing like, like from the side, not from the front. And it's really cool that way. <laughs> All right, so what? What are we going to do? Are we going to hit that first or are we going to, are we going to talk about the book first? Because you know what? You know me. He already – he made me – in our notes, and our show notes, he, he warned me. He was like, dude, come on. Slow down, man. We only have a little bit of time for the interview. No, I didn't say a little bit. I said we have 40 <laughs> minutes. I have questions. All okay. right. So then real quick, let me, let me burn through the rodeo questions real quick. Okay. All right. So, All right. so you said you had favorite writers. Who's your favorite writer? Um, right now, my favorite writer is a Brazilian by the name of Kaique Pacheco. Um, he's actually nice. currently ranked number one. He didn't start off the year real great, but he's, he's got it right now. So we're about to go into the second half of the season. So I'm super excited. <laughs> and I, you know, I was doing a little research on rodeo and women used to be in the, in the early days, women were fully incorporated into the whole thing. And mm -hmm. then a couple women got killed during competition. And then they yep. banned women from most of the stuff. Are women back into most of it, or is it still kind of restricted? So that's kind of funny that you bring that up, because this past week I spent uh, mainlining all of um, – <laughs> so there's a, there's a uh, streaming service called uh, Ride Pass, <laughs> right. and, and I am a subscriber. Because <laughs> everything I do, I'm, I'm just a wait, nerd. Wait. I can't help it. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you know, when I hear ride pass, I think there's a swipe left or right in there somehow. I don't know. Okay. So, but they uh, sent out an email that um, they were, because there's like ride TV, right? And mm -hmm. they do all the rodeo and all that stuff. Um, but they sent out an email saying that now on ride pass, you could watch this series called Cowgirls. And what this is, and, and these, these ladies were actually just on, um, I think it was Good Morning America talking about this. Um, <laughs> and it's, it's a, it follows a group of, um, I think there's like nine of them total over the course of the season um, that are doing like exhibition um, bronco riding. Um, and so this is like a new kind of reintroducing them. And at the beginning of the series, it gives a little history on uh, on the cowgirls and everything and how they used to be a part of it. And, and uh, yeah, like you said, uh, one of the women, specifically one of the women got killed and they just kind of, they, they axed it. So now they're trying to bring it back, which I think is amazing. And watching these women... Uh, go at it full tilt like this is just incredible to to see them progress throughout throughout the series and there's a season two coming so um, I'm excited for that one and I followed them cool. all on Instagram because like I said huge nerd That's cool. <laughs> so so I have you ever ridden a mechanical bull <laughs> no I have that would require me leaving the house so it's got to be on your bucket list right it is it's kind oh, of on my bucket list yeah <laughs> I have actually ridden. I have ridden a mechanical cow. When I was young, we lived in Florida when I was, when I was a young man, and my, uh, my mom and her boyfriend used to go to the bars all the time, and there was this one bar that had a mechanical bull. Now, they didn't crank that thing up like the adults because I was only like eight or nine, but this is back when, you know, you'd take your kid to a bar with you at night, you know, whatever, uh, <laughs> and put him now, on the mechanical Florida, bull. right? I think they right. still yeah. do that. <laughs> right, probably, probably. But yeah, so I've, I've actually ridden one. Mike, you ever been on a... I have not. No. Of course, uh, you, you I, have felt a bull on your rear end, though, right? We, we discovered yes, this last week. Last week of story time, yes. I, the, I the did. The bull a, rode a, you. And I was. I was bucked by a bull right over a fence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so I don't have a fondness for them, but I also don't have – well, I have a fondness for horses, but I was also dragged by a horse. But I would still get <laughs> on. <laughs> you know. so, when you live on a farm, though, you know, you're eight years old. There's a – you learn – things you only have yeah. to experience things once and you learn right. 
Just ask Dennis. All right, so there was one other thing I ran across when I was doing my research, and this one I just thought was – I won't stay on this. This is just funny. So right, this cracked me up when I saw this. So you know you know how you have like – you have like uh, uh, um, – what are they? Skate um, – when you have skaters, the, the girls are following around uh, Betty's. So you have skate Betty's. You have mm-hmm. uh, um, uh, snow bunnies. Or these are all just terms. I'm not. Are you, know. you going to bring up the Monster Energy Girls? <laughs> no, <laughs> because I'm going to bring up. Has them. <laughs> well, I I believe it. No, I was going to bring up Buckle Bunnies. That cracked me up when I saw that. I was like, Are you kidding me, <laughs> Buckle Bunnies? Oh my god. Yeah, I, I believe it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just like, well, uh, Really? <laughs> I just thought it was that, funny. That's something that Lena. Uh-oh. She could, that's... Uh, oh, Lena? Oh, she would, oh, she would probably have... Hmm. Yeah, she, she would have something to say buckle... about that. Look, like, to say, you know, oh, look at them there. They're trying to be Buckle Bunny. You know, have something bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she'd have an yeah. attitude about it, for sure. Buckle Bunny? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, she, that's, that's right. She would come and want to meet her, her favorite, you know, rodeo person. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, one of you. And she's like, I know, I know Buckle Bunny! <laughs> 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 that is so funny. I I'd never actually heard that term before, but yeah, I absolutely buy that, and I think it's book great. two. <laughs> Put it in book two. <laughs> yeah, that that might have to happen. Right, that's awesome. All right, so <laughs> hey, so why you know let let's get into the interview on on the book then. So the book is is make make bright the arrows, and uh, uh, how does this relate to that book in any way, Star? I don't, you know what what could this do with a with a futuristic book? I mean, rodeos. So. <laughs> <laughs> my my whole concept for this book is that I so I, I don't read a lot of hard science fiction because it just it tends to get a little too lost in the weeds for my personal taste. Mm-hmm. Um, so I wanted I, I had this idea and it was actually about Lila that I had the original concept. It's like oh this would be so cool, um, and the whole story kind of built itself around there. But I wanted to tell a story not from the point of view of like a scientist or a super technical person, um, kind of more just like a blue collar everyday kind of person that, you know, doesn't care how the tech works. She just wants to push a button and get it done. She shoots things and she does the heavy lifting. Um, and, and so I, th- I think, I think that came across pretty well in the books. Um, yeah. She has a very distinct voice on like, anything I've ever written before, um, which I've never actually done space opera before either. So, um, yeah, that was an interesting experience. <laughs> right. That she's really she's cool. like, she's like happily simple. And I don't mean simple in a, like dumb, simple, simple yeah, as in like a basic dumb. normal. No, no, no. She's not she's, dumb. Yeah. She's, she's just, just she's a normal person. No nonsense. Right. She's no nonsense. And she's, she's happy to know what she knows and she doesn't, you know, need to like, you know, she's like, I ain't one of them tech types. I do what I do, and I know what I do, and I like it, and I'm good at it, right? That mm-hmm. kind of, you know, which yeah. is cool. She was, she was a cool character. I liked her. Yeah, so so, so many of my characters tend to be very, um, look, more intellectual types. Um, I'm, try, I'm trying to think of a, a good example of, like nothing is coming to me off the top of my head but this like i said this was a very very different character for me to write because she's not like you know this upper class highly educated person um like like i said she's very much roll up her sleeves get her done yep. right so we mike and i were both reading the book and mike i'm gonna let you go ahead you go through this process because we talked about this okay. what, what right. did you and i encounter that was kind of interesting we were just like oh well, check it out well, you know, you and I have many things in common, you know, being best buds, best friends and everything else. But you know what? We share something that, you know, sometimes we share things we're not very proud of. And that would be, you know, a little bit more male privilege than we'd even like to admit we have. And, you know, it's, it, it is what it is. So I'm, I'm just, you know, and I'm listening to this book and having a great time. And all of a sudden, at some point, I'm like, Ev- everyone's female. Ev- everyone. And, and it wasn't like, hey, wait a minute. No, yeah. not at all. It was just everyone's female, huh? Huh? Why? Why wouldn't I have? Wh- why is that even? Why? Why am I having this feeling? Why? Wh- what? What is going on here? And yeah. so it, it put. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, we froze. A bunch of girls. And I... Oh, I froze. Oh no. Yeah. All right. I'm, no, am I not frozen now. Yeah, you're good. You're good. Keep going. Okay. Okay. No, I just I kept you know and but I kept going with it and. Uh, we we both had a talk and we were just like, oh man, I hope it wasn't like I hope it's not like a complete agenda, but 
And it seems like, oh, and then, of course, we were a little bit like, oh, I hope it doesn't, like, turn into, like, it's just a mail bashing book, which it wasn't, and it's not. Totally Let me put that out there right now. Yeah. And, you know, it was very well balanced, and we ended up loving it. Um, to that end, I thought it was, and we had this long discussion about this. I was like, Pete, I really, I would like to put something out there about this because it's not like I want to take away from the book and talk, and we're not going to go down a rabbit hole on male privilege or, or on, you know, equality or anything else. We are just going to say that, interesting, that as males, you know, it, it, it hit us like that. Yeah, right? well, for me, you know what it is, Mike? For me, it was that I noticed it, and I was like, and I just realized at that, that instant that I was noticing it, that like, if this was all guys, this is what, this is what was interesting to me. I was like, yeah. I noticed this about myself, and I caught it right away, and I was like, wow, that was that was a cool feeling. I was like, if this had been all guys, I would never even have noticed it. Would not have questioned. Would even have noticed it. I would just read the book. It would have never even occurred to me that that was the case. And as I was reading, I'm just like, wow, really? Yeah. I'm like, damn. And then I was like, wait a minute. Why am I even noticing this? And then I was like, huh. And then I went on the rest of the book. That was it. I mean, I was yeah. like pretty much – it just it, right. it kind of stopped me for a second, and then I was like, ah, that's neat. And then I kept going. Yeah. So I found out a little something about myself. Thank you, Starla. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're welcome. If I can educate and entertain at the right. same time, you know. But, cool. but this, is where, <laughs> this is where I'll bring it back around. Remember the pen? I'm pulling the pen out. Uh -oh. um, so, like, when, when you were hanging out with your grizzled old uh, well, uncle, what was it? Uh, it's Yelking. my uncle-in-law, I guess. Okay, fine. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> Um, I would imagine that, you know, you were probably maybe had a little preconceived, you know, maybe like, oh, it's not going to be a good thing. And you get down there and you start talking to them. And I'm not sure that that's your case here, but it could easily be that way with anyone. They go into an, uh, uh, an environment that is kind of like, I don't know, sort of alien to the way they normally are. And then they realize, oh, wow, I can have a good time with this person. I never thought I'd be able to have a good time with. And you're like, I, you know, there was a little bit of prejudgment on my end on that, you know, and then you, not that you lived off of it or that it bugged you or anything, but it was there and you notice it and you go, oh, wow, that's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it was actually more after the fact that I was reflecting on it because at the yeah. time I was just so excited that here was a person that I could ask all of these questions and you could just see him light up because nobody yeah. else in the family gave Two craps <laughs> about PBR, and here I come in just asking, you know, how do they do the scoring? You know, how does it work? What are you looking for with the writer and, and all of these things? And he was just as excited as I was. And, yeah, it wasn't really until after the fact uh, when I was talking to his wife, you know, about – how he, and she was just remarking like how much he had enjoyed the visit and and how animated he was um so it, and so it wasn't really until that point that i gave it any thought at all right um it was just really cool to be able to connect with somebody on that level it's like i said i mean nerds just do that when there yeah. is something we love and we know that there's this other person that loves that too it's like bam instant connection and we don't care anymore <laughs> we latch on like Hi, uh -huh. person. I <laughs> person who talks about the same thing I talk about. Yeah, yeah I do that. At, I do that at work sometimes. I have a couple of nerd friends at work, and we'll start nerding out about something. And one of the other guys that I work that we work with will be like, uh, "Okay," and they'll walk away because it's like, "Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Did we did we just do that? We did that, didn't we?" <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> All right. All right. So. I, I was uh, I saw a, either a tweet I think it was a tweet you had and you were talking about the um, the someone who sang at the the opening ceremonies right someone <laughs> the, the Star Spangled Banner or something right yeah. and, I, and I'm like and I was like you were like yeah at the PBR I could do better than that and I'm like <laughs> I'm like perhaps but this is where I first got yeah. exposed to like okay like, wait, this she's is a hipster what. <laughs> 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 I'm like, and I'm like, I'm like, okay, uh, Google, tell me, PBR. Can you run a cross check on PBR, please? <laughs> and it's like professional bull riders, and I'm like, uh, no. Mm, like, yes. You know. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, right. Like yes. Uh, yeah, but, yeah. I think it was, it was, it was one of those things that I was like, you know, PBR is ever looking for someone to sing that can stay on key, and you know, all this, you know, I'm available. Um, nice. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. I would definitely. That's that would be like one of the highlights of my bucket list. <laughs> wow. Never, hey, such a dork. <laughs> five years ago, five years ago, would you, would you believe that you were saying that? 
Um, I've, I've kind of learned to say never will I never. <laughs> I don't say <laughs> right. that anymore. <laughs> right. Because I used to say never will I write romance, you know, never will I write sci-fi. Like, just stop. <laughs> so I don't right. I don't say those things anymore. But yes, no, it's it's definitely surprising. I was watching, uh, because PBR is in the off-season, I was watching the rodeo um, a couple of weeks back, and my, my husband walks into the living room, and I start telling him about, you know, the barrel racing times and the steer wrestling, and he just looks at me and goes, who are you? <laughs> nice. Awesome. <laughs> it was, hey, it was funny. we find our joys in the weirdest yeah, places. On. A lot of different events going on. Anything else? Any other events you? Oh, no, I'm I'm sorry. That would be cheating, wouldn't it? Stop it, Mike. All right. So Starla, um, Spence has a couple questions. First off, what is the most difficult word or phrase that you've run into during your narration? <laughs> oh, I've I've got a great one that I can never say right the first time, so I have to say it slowly. It's soldiers' shoulders. Like the, oh. it's freaking impossible and i've done it to myself <laughs> other people have done it to me as a narrator like it's it's terrible and i hate it i'm gonna have yeah. to write that into my next live reading and everyone will have to have it <laughs> at some point that they get hit with it and be like god damn it because i tripped coolie up this year uh, and her, second, her second one is what is your favorite accent to do for funsies oh for funsies but well, i had a great time doing an irish accent for the book and i've nice. done it a few times but but uh, my twins were my favorites, I think. Yeah, cool. I did like them. They it sounds <laughs> so I, like you were having fun with them. Yeah. So yeah, I, and I, I, I ask you, did you? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm, I, I didn't mean to cut no. you off. Good. <laughs> oh, I was like, I don't. I don't even really know why that one. That one particular accent is just so fun. It's just like my. And anytime I had to do another book where I was like, I had to narrate a bunch of dwarves, and uh, <laughs> and and that was just like what I reverted to and. I don't know. Um, sometimes it devolves into a British accent, which is strange, or vice versa. I... <laughs> well, right. it, I, I, do you ever have issues with the delineating between the Irish and then like a Scottish? Um, I struggle with Scottish because it's kind of it's it's somewhere in between, and I can't yeah. quite nail it down. Um, even though I've I've heard it just as much as I've heard the Irish accent. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I can't I can't quite nail that one down, <laughs> and I, I haven't so much attempted it yet. <laughs> you hear that, Pete? A professional voice voice actor, and she's having trouble with the Scottish accent. He wanted uh, he wanted me to do a Scottish accent for a read one time, and um, <laughs> I spent all week listening on Facebook or you know I mean on um, on YouTube listening to the accent, and then I get around this all all someone had to do was start talking in a French and an English accent, and I lost it completely. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It turned into a Baltimore accent. He went from he went from uh, supposed to be Scottish to hey dear now, I'm going to tell you what. <laughs> it's like, oh god. <laughs> but it was, you know, it was what it was. Um, so so Mike is frozen at the moment, so I'm going to continue. Uh, you had uh, <laughs> Now, it, the people will notice that this obviously has some uh, similarities to Firefly, but in the mm. pre-show we were talking about it, that isn't what was the big inspiration for this book. Yeah, it was actually Silverado, which is an amazing movie and it's got a fantastic cast. Um, so if people have not seen this, they definitely need to go watch this. Um, it's Kevin Costner and Kevin Klein and um, uh, um, Danny Glover and um, now I'm completely blanking on the rest of them at the moment but um yeah like it's it's just this amazing movie and, and there's some serious bits in it um but yeah i was i was watching this movie and i was like oh i wonder what this would look like you know like if there's a female version of silverado out there so i mean and i can't there, there's some like female based westerns but nothing that quite captures the feeling of like silverado um right. so they, they always say you know write the kind of story that you want to read and that's right. what i did so yeah there's there's definitely a lot of inspiration from firefly and kind of a lot of the same sort of format with the cast and things but um yeah the, I, I even have a section in there um there's a uh, in, in silverado there's a bit about they're always asking where, what where's the dog payton <laughs> so in make bright the Ears, i actually have a little homage to that um, story about a cat so <laughs> okay right yeah, you, you know, um, there, I can't remember what the movie was, but I know what you're talking about. There was one, and I think it had uh, Sharon Stone in it, and and it wasn't – it just wasn't – like, 
I felt like they cheaped out. They had they had good talent in the movie. They had like a really lot of good talent in the movie, but the story was really lacking. And I'm just like, you know, your story was great. I mean, it was fantastic. Like I'm like, well, they should have made this. You know, like it should have been <laughs> more think, like. Are you this. talking about? There's a movie called Bad Girls. Yeah, Is oh, it was, it, was, and it was bad. I and, haven't and been I able to find it anywhere. I keep looking for it. <laughs> it's it's not. Look, when you find it. Just be prepared. <laughs> don't have real high expectations. Oh, I mean, no, I again, don't. <laughs> I, again, I, I'm not I, I, I'm not saying anything bad about the talent. That the, they got talented people in it. They gave them a crappy script, and it's just like, oh, why do you do that? You know, it's like, mm-hmm. I I just get mad at movies when they hire bad writers. I mean, there's been so many really good movies that could have been really good, and they get these bad writers. Like, no, all your money needs to go to the writers. All, everything else is secondary. Writer one, special effects two or three or four, somewhere down the line. You know. <laughs> But writers should be your most important thing because that is the story. Right. But, and, yeah. So above, above all, that was really it for me. You know, regardless of the characters that were in it, it had to be a good story because it was mm-hmm. not a good story. No one's going to care. You know. Mm-hmm. That's so true. Give us. Uh, we we've not spoiled anything, but we've explained that it's an all-female cast. We've explained a little. Well, why don't you kind of give us your the. Um, I guess what would you call this? The your trailer, <laughs> my, my my trailer, my yeah. my elevator pitch. <laughs> sure, yes. Oh, no, let's go pitch. more than an elevator. We're going to go more than for- an elevator pitch. Okay, so Make Right the Arrows is a space opera with a Western flair. Um, it involves a crew of ladies that are on a retrieval ship, and what they do is they go around and they pick up goods that have been illegally seized by other parties or like held for ransom. They also transport goods from place to place and they stumble across um, just from reading the blurb. You can, you can see this. So it's not really a spoiler. Uh, Lena comes across a girl who has been left in a cellar and her guardian has been murdered. Um, So they are all, they're all kind of misfits in themselves. So they sort of taken this girl to find her a safe place to go. And that's when things start getting weird. <laughs> so Trouble I, kinda, ensues. I was like, Oh, it's, it's sort of a, and, and of course, you know, how, how can you, there are no tr- more tropes to invent, you know, right. There's no more new stories to tell. And that's, that's fine. It's how you tell the ones that, you know, you're a special one and how you mix them. But I'm like, Oh, there's like a golden child, you know, aspect to this. And, uh, and, um, yes, there was also the um, the aspect of just in, in Firefly and Serenity mm-hmm. as well that she was her own <laughs> definite um, you know uh, golden child. But I mean, this definitely had like a golden child kind of a theme to it, mm-hmm. which made me think of of that too. So uh, why don't you? I would like to kind of go through some of the the crew um, and maybe because if, if anyone hasn't started reading the book yet, you're going to introduce these. Maybe um, you talking about them may help people to better understand and have a little bit more insight than say Pete and I had going in. How do we have? What, <laughs> All right. So we'll talk about the crew a little bit. So uh, we've, we've talked about, quite a bit about Lena, um, who is the one telling this story. It's all in her voice, and she's very Southern. (laughs) (laughs) Only only she's from, you know, a different planet, so not really Southern, but she's got that twang. Um, So so she's, she's like like we were talking about before, you know, she's very blue-collar, roll up her sleeves, get her done. Um, She is the muscle. She's a hired gun, basically. Um, Then you've got... uh, the uh, highest ranking person on, well, it's not military, uh, would be Edie. And uh, we do not call her the captain because she does not like that. And it is not explained in the book. I have a short story in mind that I would like to um, explain all of that. But um, all of the crew kind of has their little quirks. And Edie will get lost from time to time in thought. And you have to kind of be careful talking to her during those um, points in time because any little thing can, you know, trigger her to be really angry. Um so, but she is very no nonsense, get her done. She's practical um, mm-hmm. above all else. And knowledgeable. She's experienced. Yes, very experienced, very seasoned. Um, the next one, um, you don't find out a whole lot about Vera. Um, Vera doesn't talk very much, um, at least not to Lena. Um, she has a very different relationship with Lila, um, who is the girl that they find in the cellar. <laughs> um, Without going into too much detail, I suppose. Um, 
it's she she's uh she she sees something in Lila that um is makes them very kindred spirits right. to one another. There um, is a connection. There is a connection, yes. Right. Um and I, I actually do explore that a little bit more in book two, but that's not what we're talking about. Right. <laughs> um so yeah, Vera doesn't say too much, but it's important. She she kind of feels very like silent Bob ish to me. So when she does say something, it's important, and she doesn't waste words. You know, she says what needs to be said and moves on. Is Vera one of the twins? No, Vera is the. I guess you would call her second in command. She's the sharpshooter. Okay. Um, yeah. Um. So like her her favorite weapon is her is her sniper rifle. Right. Um. Then you have uh. Uh, Dr. Jasmine Cole, we call her Doc, and she's the one with the British accent uh, in the book, if you're listening to the audiobook. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, she, her, her backstory is explained a little bit in, in the book. Um, you kind of know where she's coming from, and above all, she wants to do no harm, but sometimes the having good intentions does not necessarily translate to um, what happens. <laughs> right. um, so yeah, she uh, Lena calls her the patron saint of the Nancy. Um, she patches everybody up. Mm -hmm. um, let's see who's next. Uh, Cynthia Daniels is your pilot, um, and she she's very she's an odd cookie. I picture her a lot, kind of like Tank Girl. <laughs> oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> so right. that that was a little bit of my inspiration for her, but. Um, it, in listening to the audiobooks, you're, you'll hear she kind of has a, a bit of a valley girl accent a little yeah. bit, um, but it doesn't make her less competent. She's one of the best pilots that you'll find. Um, let's see. Then there um, are we down to the twins? I think we're down to the twins. Yes, we're down yeah. to the twins. Yep. Okay. And but then there's Kara and Lila still. But <laughs> this, is, this is a very like difficult cast yeah. to juggle yeah. because there's so many of them. Um, the twins um, is. Uh, Anita and JC, and they are the co-mechanics. Um, basically, JC has all these ideas for improvement, and she goes in and breaks everything, so it's Anita's job to come in and fix it, and she implements all the ideas. So they work really well together, but they're fighting all the time, like just constant bickering. Yeah. It's great. Um, they're, <laughs> they're, they're a lot of fun to write. So, so um, one, one is the dreamer, and the other is the maker. Yeah, it, it's kind of like a um, jobs... Um, uh, uh, Wozniak? Yeah, Jobs and Wozniak. It's right, a little okay. bit of like that. Yeah. Um, and then one person that doesn't get introduced until a little bit later in the book um, is Kara Monroe, who is kind of their business arranger. Like, she does all the contracts and everything. So a lot of times she's not actually on the ship. She's on a planet somewhere, you know, getting jobs and arranging things. And right. and uh, she's she's very much like a Southern Belle. <laughs> which is different yeah. than like Southern Redneck. <laughs> the accents are very different. <laughs> so, I did. So I she, liked her. I liked so her. Is she, I, is she you know, part of the crew? She is part of the crew. She actually owns the ship jointly with Edie. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Mike, I'm sorry. I cut you off, buddy. That was the impression I got. No, I was going to say that was the kind of the impression I got. Like she's, she's earned her, her right to be up to high and make those deals. And mm -hmm. have a, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, so she, she shakes all the hands that Edie doesn't want anything to do with. Um, and uh, then lastly, the we fixer. have Lila. He's the fixer. She's the fixer. <laughs> she smiles and is pretty and, and makes everybody think that, oh, she's just this, you know, fragile little thing and she will probably cut you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and uh, last we have Lila, who is, like I said, that's the girl that they find in the cellar and she has some very odd quirks. And it is one particular quirk of hers that started the whole idea of this book for me um and <laughs> it, it's it, it, it was great it was it was so much fun to try to correlate so her her little quirk i'll just go ahead and say it. her little quirk is that she spews she spouts bible verses so yes. that really explained why until closer to the end but it's right. just it's very creepy she's 15 in the book but she is small so she comes off as younger like lena thinks she's about 13 maybe um oh. so it's kind of creepy listening to this childlike voice whisper these bible verses and then something weird happens <laughs> right and and they're not you know i was listening to it and i, and I was like <clears throat> it sounds like bible verses and i've you know i've read the bible on unfortunately but it has um the the bible has like you know these verses that everybody knows i didn't recognize hardly any of these 
right? So that was kind of cool. You know, they weren't ones. Mm-hmm. But I was like, God, and, and, and it's even mentioned in the book when they notice it, you know, that uh, it sounds bible Right, but nobody says, "Oh, that's you know, whatever Matthew." Yeah, no, I, I don't blah, blah, blah. name specific verses and stuff. I mean, right. I have a list of them that I kept sure. for my own personal information. But um, there's some actual sites out there that there's a site that I would go to, where I would type in a specific word, um, because I knew kind of what it was going to be attached to. So I was like, "Well, let me look up this word and see what comes up," and then I would pick the one that I thought would sound the creepiest. <laughs> nice, nice. nice. Uh, and and that's that's the ah I'm not gonna give it away never mind uh, <laughs> I'll well, I'll leave that alone. Thing. Here's the thing. At first I was like, why aren't why isn't anyone mentioning this? And then it, it occurred to me, oh nobody really wants to. Everyone wants to pretend they're not even hearing it. Right. <laughs> like, I think I would do the same thing too. Like <laughs> so anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. And then you realize later, holy shit! Wait a minute. She said something, so something was supposed to have happened. So what happened that she said that, right? Yeah, yeah. I, you know what I'm talking about, and I'm not giving anything right. away, but I, I, right. I just want well, you know that I know what's going <laughs> on. All right, sorry. I, <clears throat> let's, no, not, let's, let's not even accidentally give anything away. So speed track. Tell me about the speed track. I thought that was kind of cause a cool name. I mean, I get that that's how they travel faster than light, but, I mean, what, what, did, what do you have in your mind about the speed track? So I was kind of picturing something, if you've read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, <laughs> oh, yeah. where, where they are clearing away Earth, you know, to, to make room for this, you know, intergalactic freeway thing. <laughs> right. So that was kind of what I had in mind when um, I was doing it. Basically, nice. I, I have, what I have pictured is just, you know, these series of very large structures um, that are kind of open, but they contain this highway that's sort of invisible but sort of not and i i don't know i don't go really too like deep into the tech in because way. it's not important to the story right not important it just to the story. works I got you. yeah 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 that's <laughs> perfect here, here's here's where like pete and i are gearheads so <laughs> we I, like i have a list of a few things i wanted to ask you about and if there's anything in your you know you know your universe bible that you're working on or have you know expanded on then, then you can go ahead and talk about it if not then eh, maybe some food for thought Maybe you want to expand on it. Um, first thing uh, after the speed track would be like uh, like the plasma saw because you did cover that a good bit. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to envision like, well, obviously it was a it's a it's it's not just like a um, what do you call it? like a lightsaber or anything. It mm-hmm. literally like a piece of metal that probably is is like uh, or a well, uh, I, I picture it more like a um, a, a welder's tool like what they would use um basically it's just so hot it's just melting things it doesn't necessarily have to have this big you know right thing that extends out and literally saws through it but she talked about taking blades and switching blades out so i'm thinking that there is some sort of a a piece that goes on that this piece of metal and it well yeah yeah no okay (laughs) there's a lot of times that mike thinks he hears things just (laughs) Fine. Just, just humor, humor him. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I basically pictured it more like a, like a, a welding tool that was just right. hot enough to cut through these metal um, mm-hmm. sides of these, you know, ships and everything. So. Cool. All right. And what about the guns? Like, uh, is there anything particular about the bullets or you know the projectiles or how they work? You know, I, I'm kind of of the, if it ain't work, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. Um, and even in like Firefly. They're just using regular old guns. Mm-hmm. So it's like, why? Totally I, I don't necessarily need to change that because that will kill you just as readily as, you know, a laser blast. <laughs> guns are super huge, efficient. How far into the future are we? Um, I think I've pegged it in 5,000. Lila at some point says how old she is and what year she was born. It's like she was born in like 5129 or something yeah. like that. So, I mean, this is pretty it's far afield. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not... I, I'm, I don't think I'm in any danger of running afoul of no. <laughs> the technology is going to catch up to that. Not in my right. lifetime. I don't right, care. Right. <laughs> right. Right. And exactly. even if it would normally surpass it, there's enough time and stuff that could have happened that it could have gone back down again a little bit to get where it needs to be to where it is now. Yep. So, so any, anything else, Pete? Any other uh, technologies you were thinking of or anything you was noticed? No, no, I was just, you know what, I, I was following along, you know. I mean, I was a little curious what, what kind of guns they were using because she never says, but it doesn't matter. It, like, it doesn't matter. They're guns. It's a gun. You point it, you shoot it, people die, they don't die. 
didn't matter. I and I did. I pictured bullets. I figured they were shooting bullets because you know. Mm-hmm. I did. I mean, shit. I I pictured Lena with two six six shooters. You know, I mean that's. <laughs> That's just yeah, how well, I, I mean, that, she, the, I say a couple times that she has pistols at her hips, and that's exactly yep. what I was, you know, thinking of. Mm-hmm. I talk about she has a shotgun, you know. Right. But, um, yeah, so I, I, I do. I just picture regular bullets because if you're busy inventing space travel <laughs> and spaceships, right. you know, you don't necessarily need, you know, sometimes you know, just keep it simple. Mm-hmm. Yep. I, you know, Mike, I don't have any other, uh, no other tech questions. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, well, I mean, you had some questions here. They're, they're a little deep, and we're getting to like 942. All right. So... Well, I will pick one of these two that okay. I will ask. Also, we had um, Scott Pond, our big our buddy, oh, yes. our Scott. big lovable buddy is in the chat room, and he had asked, he said, what is your favorite story, hook, or trope that you like to twist and use in your writing? Oh, gosh. Um What's like asking? What is what is your secret, <laughs> right? <laughs> what is my secret? Um, um, I, I take stories that are all about dudes and I tell them about women instead. Um, I, <laughs> Works. Um, because well, I do. I have an entire series of flipped fairy tales. They are gender flipped retellings of fairy tales. Um, and I, I guess in a way that's what I've done here, but it's not. I don't know. For for me, it's it's about telling a good story and not necessarily about what's in someone's pants. I guess like. Uh, <laughs> that's right. It shouldn't be. No, which is why right. I, I noticed that scroat was used uh, interchangeably <laughs> between men and women. Yeah, yeah, like, it, it, it's like calling somebody dude. I call everybody dude. It doesn't matter, you know. It's, like, it's just what I do. Um, so yeah, it's just yeah. That's a non-gender specific <laughs> insult. I right. I call every I call everybody dude. I call my wife dude. I mean, she like do something. I'll be like dude, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> She's like, did you just right. call me dude? I'm like, yeah, I called you dude, dudes. Dude's dude. I call my daughter dude. Yeah, I call inanimate objects dude, so... <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> Look at your computer go, dude. Computer. Right. Why? <laughs> dude, come on. Right. <laughs> Fantastic. All right. So I will ask this particular question. And uh, it's, it's a little heavy. We'll see. We'll see where you want to go with it. Um, you, you may abstain. You may object. You may plead the fifth. But... Uh, <clears throat> Are there things like either behaviors or customs or norms that you wanted to include in your universe um, that maybe you later you decided to change due to either conflicts or current cultural, economical, or political climates? Uh, and inversely, is there anything that you felt needed to be added? So in other words, did you have to take anything out or did you say, oh, no, no, I have to put something in? So one of the things that I thought about a lot with writing this book is that Lena – who is the narrator, um, is not a straight female. She, she is most definitely a lesbian. Um, and that's just who she was. It doesn't really make any difference to the story. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was hesitant about that at first, wondering if maybe I should change that because I didn't, didn't want to get it wrong, mostly. Um, but uh, there, there's a lot of, and as, and as I was thinking about it, I was like, well, you know, the, the, the current climate right now for, you know, LGBTQ people it can be very hostile. Um, and, it, and it's getting better just slowly. We're, we're making steps towards that. But um, my, my feeling on it was that, it, I mean, this is like, I'm going to be like 3,000 years in the future plus at this point. And I feel like people would have found a whole other mess of reasons to hate each other (laughs) than than things like (laughs) skin color or, you know, orientations. (laughs) It's like, what planet are you from? (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) It's like, like Lena herself is very derogatory about people from the the central systems. Um, She thinks they're very privileged and she just kind of turns up her nose at them. Um, And the, the same is, you know, true for them that people from the central systems, like, oh, backwater planet is this girl from, you know? Um, so yeah, they, they found different reasons to hate each other, but there, there's nothing culturally I shied away from. Like one of the, one of the men that's actually in the book, um, I picture him as being Korean. Lena doesn't know this. It's not something that's discussed. Um, I picture him as being Korean. She thinks, oh, this sounds kind of like Chinese, but I don't know Chinese, so whatever. Um, right. But I actually pictured it as Korean <clears throat> in my head. Um, whether or not that translates to the book, I don't know. But yeah, because humanity has spread out so far 
just within the galaxy. It seemed silly to shy away from doing anything. You know, I mean, they, they all have these different accents, but I figure, you know, people from different countries, you know, have settled on different planets and in these different colonies. Um, so you may have concentrations. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, no, I, there wasn't anything that I really shied away from, um, including, um, aside from my initial hesitation to write a character that was something other than what I am. So, Right. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Um, talking about, like, things that people might fight about in the future... Uh, I, was, I was playing. A, we were playing a, uh, one of these games, the Cyberpunk era, but it was Cyberpunk, a little bit beyond Cyberpunk, where there were people living in space. And I was playing a character that spent most of his life in space, and he had, he had this really distaste for people uh, who lived on planet side, and he, he called him, he, he called him dirt dwellers. So whenever <laughs> I was playing him, and he, would, you know, he he wanted to be, you know, like he was dealing with somebody who's who's from planet side, he'd be like, you you damn dirt dwellers, you just don't get it, do you? <laughs> So, so it's belt- like I could see, I could see this. Well, it was, he wasn't a belter, but it was the same kind of idea, right, Mike? It is the same kind of ideas. But this was before I got into the Expanse. I was like, that was a really nice thing about the Expanse that that when I was watching, I was like, oh, I can relate with these belters. I've played a character like them, so mm. that was kind of cool. Um, well, all right. So I definitely want to say that the audio production was wonderful. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Oh, it was so good. Uh, by the end, <laughs> I it was like, oh. Uh, there's there's wrap up. I'm hearing wrap ups. There's people <laughs> who are going to be leaving, and I'm not ready for them to leave. I need more of this. Just as I was feeling comfortable. So, I think that that in and itself is a testament to how well you did, and I I commend you on that. Bravo. Well, yes. It was thank very you good. very much. Well, I I can't take all of the credit for that because James Melzer produces my audio, and he makes me sound fantastic. So, <laughs> yeah. So shout out to James because he does a great job. Yeah, it was. It was. It was. I got. I got to tell you, the the narration of that was really fantastic. It was. It was really, really good. Um, and the fact that you read your own book and you did all the voice. Now, do you do the voices one at a time, or do you like literally jump from voice to voice? As much as I can, like, so narrating an audiobook with this many voices and and like a conversation between eight or nine people and all of them have different voices, you start to forget who you are. But no, so I will I will read them and I go straight down the book and I if I mess up I back up and I go again and I may be halfway down the page and it's like oh no I'm reading this entire passage with an Irish accent and this is all Lena <laughs> so right. yeah I, I I make mistakes but like I said James fixes it <laughs> nice nice bravo good yeah good oh, job Pete by the way before we go one to the game I will say that. Next year's reading at Balticon, because evidently this is now a, a new thing. We have got right. to get Starling in on the reading. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Down with that. Yeah. I could, yeah, I could totally do that. Maybe, maybe if, we, if we raise the, uh, the, the level of our, uh, of our guests, not like have uh, Jonathan or... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan? <laughs> what? Yeah, I mean, uh, John, um, what's his name? John. John Walker? Oh, come on. John Walker's our buddy. What are you yeah, doing? I'm banging on John. That's not fair. Yeah, he, he, he does what he drives the entire cast off the rails. Okay. Oh, that he, was- well, okay. Fair enough. He he might have done that. He might he might have driven I us. This. I have say that out of love and jest, and everyone needs to know that. But you know what? I love that he drove it into the dirt. That was perfect. Hey, at least it wasn't me this time. That's all I yeah. have to say. It wasn't me. Cause we were we were like going along nice and smooth, yes. and then John starts reading, and it's like, oh great, it's a homoerotic thriller now, fantastic. <laughs> I hadn't realized I hadn't written it like that, but hey, that's where we are now. And I just roll with it. I'm like, all right, whatever. That's what it is now. That's it wasn't that, but now it is, and it was funnier that way. Because <laughs> no, you never know when, where, or how it's going to go off the rails. It's the best. Right. It's Probably the best reading of all of Balticon now. <laughs> all right. We love it. We love it. I just I just wait. I give them I write a serious script, so I write a serious script. But then they start putting annotations on it, right? And they're just like they're like, Pete, you wrote th- what what are you writing? I'm just like, if you read it straight, like normal, like how I wrote it, it wouldn't be that. You're turning it into this. This is all you guys. You know? Because they're like, the guy says, Hey, come over here, let me have a look at you. You know, and it's it's not supposed to be it, okay, it's supposed to be, hey, come over here. Let me have a look at you. Not, hey, come over here. 
Let me have a look at you. Because that's what they do! <laughs> but that makes it funny. It makes it funny. You should know better. You should know better. It's fine. I, you know what? I'm totally good with it. I'd go for it. You can, you can make it crazy as you want. I'm good. All right. So, Starla, let's, let's give them some links. Let's say... Uh, everybody, you want to go to Starla, S-T-A-R-L-A-H-U-C-H-T-O-N, StarlaHutchton.com. Uh, you can also go to uh, DesignedByStarla.com to find her stuff. And uh, any other links you want to give out, or will that get them where they need to be? Um, that should get them most anywhere that they need to be, but like they can follow me on Instagram at Starla Hutchton. I have my Starla Hutchton author page on Facebook. I have a design page on Facebook. Um, I'm at Starla Hutchton on Twitter. Right. <laughs> and we Actually, did it's Starla Hutchton. It's me. There's there's right. only one of me. <laughs> so right. I hope you're not. I hope you're not mad. I I, I I always try and be a little healthy Helperton before the show, and oh, and I made a bitly. For you, and I think I posted it on Facebook for you. I so you know what it is. If you know anyone goes to bit.ly, uh, uh, the uh, uh, what is it? Uh, make right the arrows. Yes. Just all all lowercase. So if you just type in that, you will go straight to the Amazon page. Mm -hmm. And I was even thinking, if you want, if you have a link that you wanted to have a bitly for, uh, whatever it is, I can do one that's just um, bit.ly forward slash um, Nancy, as well, because that's available. So if if you think about it. No. Oh, okay. I will keep it in mind. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we didn't, uh, and we didn't get to that, but I don't want to because we got to move on. But uh, Nancy is a real thing. Look it up. Yeah. I mm -hmm. looked it up. And I was like, that's oh, on purpose. That's very interesting. <laughs> yes, very, very, yes, very purposely chosen. That was the one that kind of scared me a little bit, but I'm glad we didn't go too crazy with that. But that was cool. That was very good. Very well used. I, I, I approve. <laughs> very well done. Not that you need my approval. I'm just saying that I do. <laughs> Right. Jeez. What? I'm, I'm serious. I, 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 you know, I'm always worried I'm going to come off preachy because sometimes people are like, oh, you're like, no, that's not me. <laughs> game. So there's a game. It's All right. So anyway, <clears throat> what? So, hey, it's game time with the Mythwits. I'm your game master, Peter Bryant. And on this episode, we're playing Rodeo or Nodeo. I have gathered the name of real rodeo events and included a few of my own. You'll have to guess whether this is a real event or one of the ones I made up out of whole cloth. For every one you get right, you'll get one point. Highest point wins. However, unlike normal, because Mike is at a serious disadvantage, <laughs> we are going to give him the win if there's a tie. So, Starly, you have to actually beat him by a point to win. But, but you've got the no edge, pressure, trust though. me. <laughs> you've got the edge, trust me. That's... So, wow. what? I, 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 I can't thank you enough. Thank you for that edge. Right. Ooh, no, you don't have no, an edge. No. See, now I'm going to be super embarrassed if I lose because he's like going in blind to this. Like, right. Well, lose, Mike is... Right. Oh, my gosh. Well, so much well, we'll see. Loss. We'll see. We'll see. It's, look, hey, you don't win or lose anything in this game other than getting the <laughs> sound me. played It's a matter of pride, man. <laughs> right. I got you. So, good luck, y'all. It's now time for Rodeo or Nodeo. Outside. All right, so let me do. Uh, let me let me. Crap, I forgot where I put it. Oh, there it is. Okay, all right, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Uh, and then I got the score. Mike, get off that box on the score thing. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. I have to. Uh, I had to pull that up there. Where I? Yeah, that would be handy. Mike's gonna keep score while I uh, while I read the questions. Uh, and then let's do this. Let's show everybody the. We we people can see the scores while we play. So, both of you are at zero at this moment. Uh, and Starla, I'm gonna let you go first. Uh, being or no, yes, you're gonna go first because you're the guest. Um, so here you go. Here's her first word: hot dogging. Hot dogging. That I think is a real thing. I have heard that term. Starla, <laughs> please let me be right. <laughs> All right, the sound thing is not working. There you go. There it is. Finally. Did you hear that? No. no. Wait a minute. <laughs> no? Okay. No. Well, you got it right. So, all right. So, we don't have sounds. Yes. All right. That's fine. That's fine. Whatever. Yes, that is correct. Hot dogging is a spectator event that simulates wild or feral boar hunting with dogs. It requires specially trained and bred hot dogs that are used to bay and sometimes catch the hog or boar. Very good, Starla. First point goes to you. 
Mike? Because yeah, it wasn't real. I was like, where, where did you get your fake names from? Like Urban Dictionary? <laughs> right. No, I did not go to Urban Dictionary. For, the ones I made up, I made up. All right. So, Mike? In other words, Urban Dictionary. All right. Go ahead. right. Mike? Wild cow milking. Wild cow milking. <laughs> Wild cow milking. <laughs> that is bullshit. That That is... That has got to be fake. Wild cow milking. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. <laughs> His face is great. <laughs> no. Wild no, cow no, milking, Mike. It's so, it's so fake. It's fake. Please fake? be fake. fake. Final answer. Fake. Oh, God. Wild cow milking is a rodeo event seen at mainstream wow. and ranch radios, a team-based competition. The goal, listen to this, the goal is to catch and milk a wild cow, a semi-feral animal that is not used to being milked by people, usually a beef cattle breed, in as short a time as possible. <laughs> <laughs> catch your mother teats and hang on, brother! <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. All right, Starla, <laughs> here's yours. <laughs> All right, let's let's hear it. <laughs> Saddle bucking. That I think is real. Yeah. Is that your final answer? I don't know. Could, <laughs> Could be real. Could be fake. Because I feel like. Because you can do bronc riding with a saddle and without it. Mm -hmm. And I think they refer to the... I'm going to say yes. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Starla. I made that one up. I, I took two words from two different events. Saddle uh, bucking made up out of whole cloth. Just yeah, smashed two you, together. You got me. You got me. Sorry. <laughs> hey, I... Look, I didn't have a lot to work with here. There's only so many <laughs> events. I had to make them sound real. I love that right. you feel so bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mike? So, so Spence and her dad are in the chat room, and Spence is yelling at her dad. <laughs> I just thought that was that's funny. That's all. I'm gonna, I'm so Mike? Gonna yes. Yours is camp drafting. Camp drafting? Yes, camp drafting. Camp. If it helps you, it's one word. Right. No, doesn't really help. Um, could you use it in a sentence? <laughs> Lena sure loves the camp drafting event. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Camp drafting. Camp drafting. Oh, no. No, I'm saying no. I'm saying bullshit. I, I was I wrong that to up? say bullshit last time, okay. and I'm going to say bullshit this time. Bullshit this time. All right. Mike, I'm sorry, but camp drafting is a unique Australian sport involving a horse and a rider working cattle. The Did riding style Australian? is Aus yes, Australian stock, somewhat akin to American Western riding, and the event is similar to the American stock horse events, such as cutting, working, cow horse, team pinning, and ranch sorting. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So re yeah. Remember in all of this that the whole rodeo started because – people were taking their jobs and, and making them into competitions, like who could do them the best and the fastest. Right. So What about camp drafting again? It's a unique Australian. No, it's a, it's a, a rider working cattle. Like So right. a guy on a horse. Was, all I could think was like, all right, how fast can you set up a tent? And I'm like, eh, no, no, that's not. <laughs> Dude, it's, it's basically cowboying, I think. You could probably just call it cowboying. Guy well, on a horse. Cowboy, I would have said it was real. Okay, all right, and you'd have been wrong. All right, so uh, Starla, so, shoot, shoot, dogging, shoot, dogging. <laughs> this is just so hard because they're so similar to like actual events. <laughs> I know they all sound they I and and the ones that I made up, I I picked as close to the sound as I could pick. It took me a little while yeah. to put this one together. Um, shoot dogging. You know what? I'm just going to stick with it. I'm going to say real. <laughs> it's all that real. Is, Everything is real. That is correct. Shoot yes. dogging is a rodeo event related to steer wrestling in which the steer used uh, weights between 400 and 500 pounds. However, the competitor starts with starts the event in a rope shoot 
with the steer as opposed to grabbing onto the steer from horseback. That's the one where they stand. They, I think they're in the pen and they open the door. Maybe. Well, and that's bull riding. For, I don't know. Anyway, <clears throat> so yes, she got that right. <laughs> Mike, Excellent. two points for Starla. No, one, okay. Oh yeah, two points for Starla. One, zero for Mike. Mike, here's your chance. If you say dog shooting, I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> no, hog tossing. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Why? Why? Uh, I'll because I'll, 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 I'll go real. You were like, no, because now I'll go high and he'll go low. Oh. Oh. I, I cannot even game theory myself out of this. What is love this game? Hog what tossing. Is, hog, hog tossing. To right. right. <laughs> This is why I love these sports. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Mike. What's your... Oh, God. If I say it's real, I'll be completely 100% to be wrong. Like, I, I can win for losing, though. All right, I'm going to say that it's real. Okay. Say it's real. Hard tossing is... Real, real, real. <laughs> hard tossing is hogwash. I made it up. Hogs are so <laughs> fucking heavy. There's no way they could toss hogs around. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded real though, didn't it? See? Damn it. Yeah! Alright. Hey, hey, okay. I, I am 100% wrong. Right. So far, yes. Style up. <laughs> Chip chucking. Chip chucking. Chip you know, chucking. Oh God! Advice, Starla, but no, I just I just <laughs> have this horrible vision of people making a competition out of throwing cow patties. <laughs> That's yeah. all I can think of. Um, which I mean, people are weird and they do that stuff. Um, mm -hmm. shit. Um, uh, I'm I'm gonna say fake. I'm gonna say fake. Starla should have trusted your instinct. <gasps> Chip chucking in the Freaking event human participants weird. are required to throw a hardened disc-shaped piece of cow poop as far as they can. <laughs> <laughs> but you were you were right. No, you were right, and you second guessed yourself. You're absolutely I right. Know. That's exactly what that is. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, I think there's only going to be one winner of this game, and it's not you, and it's not it's, me. It's me. I love it. All right, Mike. All right. Yes. Bronk doggin. Bronk dog, <laughs> bronk doggin. Hold on a sec now. <laughs> what was there was that you just said something about the doggin. That was hot doggin. doggin. That was hot doggin. And there's hot doggin. Yep. Bronk. All right. You know what? Uh, oh. I'm 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 gonna all right on my own recognizance. I'm gonna say that that is real. However, hold on. I need to do a scientific experiment inside. <laughs> All right, heads, heads is real. Okay, right. All right, fate says it's real as well. Okay, bronc doggin. That is fake news. Made it up completely. <gasps> you you pulled you pulled one of those ones where you were like combining two other things. I did. I, I did. Do it. I thought he was. But yeah. There's bronc riding and shoot. There's all these doggings. I was like, ah, I'll just make one up. I'll just take one of the other words. <laughs> bronc, bronc. Okay, bronc doggin. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> eh. Right, all right, Starla, you're up. Um, wow, I thought you know. All right, anyway, I'm giving <clears throat> myself all my negative points. <laughs> I, I think I'm not negative four points. All right, all right, so, Starla. Uh, Rooster wrangling. Oh my god. <laughs> Rooster I hate, wrangling. I hate you, Pete. <laughs> I hate. What's wrong? <laughs> what? So there's an event that they do during rodeos. They usually do. It's like at the halftime thing that they do with kids. And that's mutton busting, which I hope that's not on your list <laughs> because that's her thing. <laughs> um, it is. You just got it. Rooster wrangling. God, like I said, people are weird, but I'm... Like, they could chase chickens around the arena, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say... Chickens? I'm I'm gonna say fake and just right. hope. 
Starla, very good. Because if you really change that around, it's cock wrangling. And like, really, Pete? Pete, really? <laughs> so she got that one right, Mike. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Sick. All right, so Mike, your next one. Give, give Starla a point. So would have not. I so would have said it was fake too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mike. Mike. Yes. Goat tying. So it's uh, Starla with a positive three and me with a negative four. Now you I'm just gonna go for gonna go for negative five on this one. What is it now? Goat tying. Goat tying. Goat tying. Tim Cask played this game. He was a, he was a. <laughs> <laughs> Him and Jay Libby. With, no, it's like goat tying. I'm actually gonna gonna uh, gonna theorize this one. I you know <laughs> I said I love the farm. You haven't done that yet, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah, you, you love what I do this time, right? <laughs> now I could be doing it with sheep and mm -hmm. with the hogs, right? right? We know that we know sheep hogs, but goats are just such bastards. Like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because bulls I, I, are super nice. They're really great. <laughs> friendly. Bull tying either. So I'm going to say fake. I'm going to say fake for a reason. For reasons. Okay, are. Because reasons? Yeah. Because reasons. Okay. Mike, I'm sorry. Goat tying is a rodeo event that is typically seen in youth, high school, and college rodeos in which the participant rides to a tethered goat, dismounts, catches, throws, and ties any three of its legs together. Three. Three of its legs. Like, three. Not the fourth. You stay that one out. <sighs> well, it's, I think it's the same rules in, um, in steer roping. Is it's, it? Okay. Yeah. All right, Mike. You're about to get your butt handed to you in a massive way because <laughs> Starla, mutton busting. <laughs> oh, <I hate> <laughs> really? <laughs> All right. I'll Let's just go ahead and give her that point. Kids. Do you want yeah. me to explain it? Basically, sure. they, <laughs> they, they put, they have these sheep that they herd into this little chute. Like it's a, usually a, um, um, a thing that they do at their halftime. They line up these kids in these Kevlar vests and these helmets. And they have a person what? in the chute with the sheep. And they, it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of terrible. Like these poor kids, like some of them love it, but most of them come away crying. Um, Cause they'll be like five and under. Uh, <laughs> and so they put the kid on the back of the sheep and basically they have to hold on for dear life as they the sheep runs out <laughs> of the chute and the longer yeah. they can hold on the more points they get but you know it's kind of you're judging little kids that are just there because their parents made them basically <laughs> <laughs> kevlar. It's that's armor. funny that's awesome yeah all right so kevlar vest yeah fantastic all right so mike here's your last one is the last one mike can you go for a perfect screw up score <clears throat> can you get one point just get one point okay ready no, I'm he, now, he can have his tiebreaker point. I'll let him. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Here's the thing. You don't know me. I will screw this up because I'm going for a perfect loss. I'll screw it up. So I'll get this one right. But go ahead, Pete. Right. Bring, okay. it, bring right. it. Trick whistling. Trick whistling. Trick whistling. <laughs> Something like that there? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Trick whistling. Ah, fuck it. I'm going to say real. I got to go with the, the true spirit. F cowboys whistling and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Mike completely made that one up. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> what? In the love Fuck. Hey, apparently I'm good. I'm good at this game. <laughs> <laughs> You're good at making shit up that I... Uh, I, you. I know, right? It took me a while, dude. It, this, this game took me a while to put together because this isn't one of the ones where I could pull off a list off somewhere else. I actually had to do that. I was like, God, how am I going to do it? I want to do something with the rodeo because, you know, because Starly put that in her thing. And I was just like, that'd be such a fun game to play. What am I going to do? And then I started looking at the events. I was like, God, I can't say bull wrestling because... Yeah, or, or, you know, bull riding, obviously. I had to pick ones that weren't obvious enough. And then I was like, where am I going to get fake ones? And I was just like, I don't know. Let's see. I'll just, you know, I'll just put on my yeehaw and I'll be like, hey, trick whistling, you know? <laughs> <laughs> don't I'm ride actually me. a little surprised. I thought maybe you would go for, like, the names of bulls. Um, oh. Because there's some weird ones out there. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> 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 hey, 
I, oh, hey, you know, we didn't get on this, but I, I do want to ask you just real quick. What are your What are your thoughts on on? Because you said you had opinions about you know the bull riding and stuff like that. And I know I saw some stuff online where some people are a little bothered by you know the treatment and stuff. And I, you've probably read this, and I'm sure you're pretty like have thoughts on that. What, what do you think? Is it is it is it okay? You think so? So in in the book, I talk about you know they've gone away from they they use like robot animals now with you powered by ai um but now like if you watch pbr like and you listen to they, they just had a bull a few months ago called uh, pearl harbor passed away <laughs> right. these this animal was treated like a king like lives better than 90 percent of the world probably um if you're looking at rodeo events that are like you know not the professional circuit um, like your, your back alley rodeos, then I think there's some question as to how the animals are treated. But when you're talking about like PBR, they're always very conscious. They put guys on a clock so that those bulls don't stay in that shoot too long because they're worried about the health of the animals and not and yeah. making sure that they don't get hurt. Right. Um, so, I mean, like anything else, there's people out there that will ruin it. Obviously. Right. Of course, always. Um, but yeah, I was actually talking to my uh, my eight year old. He came down while I was watching rodeo, and he's like, "Doesn't that hurt them?" I was like, "No, this is this is how the cowboys, you know, this is how they did their jobs, and uh, they're very careful not to hurt these animals because if you're hurting the animals, you're not doing your job, right? Because the whole point is to raise healthy cattle so you, that you can you know sell them and stuff later. If you're hurting right. your animals, then you know right. <laughs> you're obviously losing profit. Nobody wants that." And, and, you know, you also got to think about like, you know, because I think about this stuff from time to time where it's like, you know, they people have their dogs work in the field with them or like if I go, you know, if I go to work and I have to leave my dog at home all day and I feel bad, I'm just kind of like, well, I'm going somewhere where I don't want to be all day and I'm doing activities that I don't particularly want to do all day a lot of times. Not always. I like my job, but, you know, there are days when you're paid to do things you don't really want to do, but it's got to get done. And I'm like... The animal, I mean, how's an animal any different? You know, they're working for a living. They get fed. They get taken care of. As long as they're not treated cruelly, they got to work for a little bit. You know, and maybe the job's a little rough. But you know what? We all work rough jobs, too. Sometimes you know, some of us work some really rough jobs. Yeah. Um, Which, uh, Mike Rowe. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and, seriously, well no, I, I promise you that the bulls of the PBR have it much easier and get hurt way less than the actual riders. <laughs> Oh my God! Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You take what a hundred and say one hundred and seventy, eighty pounds versus you know like a ton of animal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> uh, seventeen hundred to two thousand pounds. Yeah, yeah. crushed yeah. knees against the gates and torn right. ACL, shoulder injuries, wrist injuries, like everything gets hurt. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure the, the the cowboys need more medical attention than than the, oh, yeah. than the bulls do. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Fantastic. Okay, good, good. I kind of felt the same way. I, bullfighting is bullshit, but that, I, rodeos yeah, are cool. That, right. that we can agree on, yes. Yep, yep, yep. Excellent. All right, we'll start with thanks. What's that? Running with the bulls? No. I don't like that either. I don't like running with the bulls. Mm, I think the yeah, animals are, are terrified. I Not a fan. Not a fan nope. of it. Me neither. I think that's a lot of mental anguish on those animals. Um, and I don't know what they do with them at the end because I don't really watch it because I don't like it. But, uh... I, you know, I agree. I think rodeo is like they're working. They, that's their job. Yeah. And, uh, you know, like like when you take a dog out to the field to run animals around shepherds and stuff, they're just working. All right, fantastic. Well, Starla, thanks for joining us. Great show. Um, we're so happy to have you back. And uh, you're you're always welcome to come back anytime you want. Um, well, thank I hope you, you had a good time. Thank you so much for uh, letting me invade your space again. This was this was a lot of fun. I had a great time. Oh, oh, oh hold on, hold on. I got one question, one question before we go. <laughs> oh, my so, God. Okay. <laughs> so when is – an appropriate amount of time for a book release to then start talking about, like when would you feel like, comfortable to start actually talking about the plot and the book itself? Like, Oh man. Um, God, I'm, I would have to give it at, at least a month or two. Some people read really slow. <laughs> right. no, that, that's fine. All right. So in other words, in uh, Pete, when is our, when is our, uh, when do we go on our break? Our fifth uh, December, season break? Dude. Yeah. December. All right. So, I, I would like to propose that we have Starla back on okay. uh, and when we can actually do a plot discussion on the book. Oh. Because, hey, I love having Starla on and <laughs> I need to redeem myself on the game. And, <laughs> and uh, no, I, <laughs> I just think that that would be cool. So, what do you think? Like a Mythwits book club? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mythwits reads. <laughs> 
you know what? We could we could do something like that. Maybe we could have. Um, and maybe we could also do like a um, maybe an author's roundtable or something. Have a couple authors come on and talk about their books and like get yeah. into depth with discussions about plots and stuff and how you get where you are and and like troubled troubled spots. And you could actually talk about examples that way. Uh, would you be up for that? What do you think? Sure, I'm up for anything. All right, <laughs> excellent. Reason. <laughs> yes, right. Uh, obviously, obviously. All right, cool, cool, fantastic. All right, everybody, go buy Starless stuff. Seriously, this book was fantastic. Um, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, and it was, uh, if you do the audio book, I mean, I highly recommend that. I'm an audio book person, and as audio books go, it was a very enjoyable listen. Um, they, you know, some authors are better than, some readers, rather. Uh, some readers or narrators are better than others, and Starla is fantastic. You're really, really fantastic. I'm, and I'm not just saying that because you're on my show. I, I honestly, I honestly believe that, so. And Starla is cool peep, so if you see her at a con, please go up and say hi. Yep. I promise I don't bite. Unless right. you ask nicely. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. With oh. that, everybody, you've just enjoyed another awesome episode, episode, episode of The Myth Wits. We're live on Facebook Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Please ask our guests questions or just banter with the other myth fits. If you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episodes on Facebook or YouTube. Find us at MythWits.com and on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as MythWits. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. And Mike, we're getting a lot of listeners lately. It's fantastic. Do, do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. And make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread Mythlet's love over the entire planet. And hey, we don't ask for this. We haven't been asked for this for a while now. But I, I, you know, I'm going to try and push it a little bit more again. Leave us a review on iTunes if, you should, if, you, if you're feeling generous and you want to give yeah. us some stars. We, we would like some stars. Uh, Mythwits is a Creative Commons product. Like and share it in all the places. Just don't edit it. Don't sell it. And, uh, you know, don't put it on the back of a bronking bull. Mythwits oh, is part of the TSR podcast. Oh, right What's oh, what? oh, Mythwits is part of the TSR podcast network. Check out TSRPN for more cool shows. And make sure to check out our parent company, Aetherforge.com, for more cool stuff at our mailing list. Hey, game school in, like, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Three days, new episode, season two premiere. Uh, Spence, who's in the chat room, and uh, James JC um, have, have been doing a fantastic job, and they have their first episode coming up, and it's fantastic. Uh, thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in, and until next week. Hey, it's the Mythwits mascot. She's back just for a, a one-week engagement only. I'm watching oh, the boy. bird. Oh, the bird. Hey, Give bird. Give me a kiss. <laughs> and